everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and today we're going to be going over the 2019 Ford Mustang and this particular one is an EcoBoost. So as always, we're going to do a quick walk around on the Mustang, then we're going to take it out to see how it drives and it should be interesting since I used to own a Shelby, you know, seeing my perspective on the car. This Mustang is being provided to us by Larry H. Miller, Ford Lincoln here in Draper, so if you are on the market for a new Ford, definitely check these guys out, they will hook you up. And then if you are stopping in for the first time, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. So under the hood here, we have a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And this particular one is the automatic transmission. So it is routed through a 10 speed automatic transmission. There are actually two different torque outputs on this car. So if you go for the coupe, you're gonna get 350 pound feet of torque. If you get the convertible, you're gonna get 320 pound feet of torque. Both of those have the same 310 horsepower. In terms of fuel economy, it's gonna be 21 around town and 32 on the highway. Now wrapping things up front, this is finished in Velocity Blue. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful color, but you can see on the hood here, we've got these little vents. They are kind of fake. Sorry, not sorry, but you can see just down below there, we have the projector bulbs. You can get projector HID bulbs with these, and then you've got little LED daytime running lights. And then one of my favorite aspects on these new Mustangs is you can get these as LEDs down here that I didn't offer on the previous generation. I'm kind of torn, so I really like this part of it, but the lights up here, they look better in person than they do in pictures, but I'm still not 100% on it. And then obviously you do get the horse front and center with the little front splitter. So around the side here, we have these 18 inch high gloss black wheels. They look absolutely fantastic. They've got a little Mustang logo front and center, and then it means the little side skirt just down the side. And then they haven't really changed much on the body style with the side of the Mustang. That looks pretty much unchanged from the prior generation. Here's the key fob for the Mustang. So we can see we've got a couple functions. We've got our lock and unlock, remote start, trunk release, all that. So if we lock the car, and then you press that twice, that'll do the remote start. You'll hear that EcoBoost start right up. And then if you press it again, That'll shut the Mustang right off. The other function is that trunk release right there. So you press that twice, that'll open up the trunk for the Mustang. And then we can pop this open so we can see the space back here. And the Mustangs are actually pretty practical trunk space. So the opening is pretty decent to get into, especially for muscle car standards. It's easy to get into there. And then you can fold down those receipts if you want a little bit more storage. And if we actually close the trunk right here, see the Mustang logo again, backup cameras right there. They give you this little tiny body painted spoiler on the back. And we can see the whole rear diffuser set up with the dual outlet exhausts. Coming around to the side, we've got keyless entry. So one touch to lock it. And then to unlock it, you just have to put your hand on the back of the door handle. It feels super familiar, I wonder why. But we can see we've got this leather padding here with some stitching, so it's all soft touch right there. Your door lock and unlock are gonna be right there. And then you've got your window controls and then your mirror controls right there with a couple speakers on the side of the door. And then you can see it says Mustang right there on the door seal. When look at the seats, they're actually power seats. This is kind of like your entry level um, cloth package on the interior, but you still get these nice like bolstered seats with the cloth that you give contrast stitching on it and then a little loop for your seat belt. I'm not gonna pop in the back, but we can look at the back seats. So you can see that that's all gonna be identical to any Mustang. It's just the material that they use on it, but the seats look identical in all of them. You can see leg room is not really plentiful. I mostly use this in my Mustang for storage. I actually had the seats folded down most of the time so I could hear the exhaust better, but other than that, you can put people back there, but it's not gonna be comfortable by any means. Well, we just got out in time, it is raining. But to start up the EcoBoost, we just have to put our foot on the brake and push the push start. Gauges will do a little bit of a sweep and it'll start right up. And in terms of step and height, it's actually pretty easy to get in. It is a little bit lower to the ground, but it's not bad. Looking at the steering wheel here, we have a couple controls for the center screen right there. These are all of your voice command controls for your phone controls, all that. And then you have your cruise control on the other side and then your volume controls for the radio. There are paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel to shift that 10 speed automatic by yourself if you want. And then your regular stocks for the windshield wipers and turn signals. And looking at the gauge cluster here over on the left hand side, we've got the RPM on the right hand side we have the speed and then there's that little configurable center screen which you can go through a bunch of different menus on the car so it'll give you different bits of information on the mustang i usually just leave mine to be a little speed up but you can see all the different menus that you can actually scroll through on this now coming over to the center touch screen right here actually first i want to mention these vents so they've got all these circular vents up here all the uh, mustangs have that i think it's pretty cool but down here on the touchscreen, it's the Sync 3 system, so it's super responsive. It's really easy to use. This is where you can do your calling, texting, 
Bluetooth, everything's gonna be via this touchscreen. It's a really nice unit, one of the better ones in the car industry. And while we're on the touchscreen, let's pop the Mustang into reverse. You can see there's a little backup camera with trajectory lines that turn as you turn the steering wheel. And then you can actually zoom in right there. I mean, I guess if you wanted to hook this up to a trailer, which I hope you're not using your Mustang to tow. Now, just down below, we have all of our analog controls for the radio. Analog climate controls are all right here. And then we have a different selections right here. So this is your mode button. This will actually pop up here so you can see the different modes that we can go through right there. So you've got your sport plus, your track, your drag, you got your snow, wet, and then your normal mode. And then you do have your steering modes right here. So it's that next switch. So normal, sport, and comfort. You just leave it over in sport on that. This is to take off your stability control, and then that's your hazard lights, and then your engine stop start button. We can see the gear selector right here for that 10 speed automatic transmission. That is the dual shift mode basically. So if you want to use the paddles to shift the gears, you can just go into that mode right there. And it's a pretty nice feeling shifter overall. And then over here we have the cup holders and then the center armrest with kind of some black stitching in it. And we can see there's some little charging stations under there. Now while we're on the topic of storage we can see the little glove box right there it's pretty standard size for the segment and then you do get a little mustang badge with a pony right up here and got some soft touch up on the dash and then i'm not sure what this material is but looks pretty neat it's kind of like a harder touch material but definitely has a cool design to it now for a baseline car the interior on this is actually pretty decent um what i would say it's not like crazy crazy loaded up but if you don't want like a crazy load up interior then this is definitely the route to go you can get like leather and all those nicer amenities on this interior if you would like and then if you guys are wondering for the price the window sticker is right there so i can't really like flip i'm not going to pull it off but what i will tell you is the total price on this is thirty-one thousand dollars before any sort of market adjustment on the car that being said though let's take out the ecoboost mustang to see how it drives Let's start up the EcoBoost here and see if I miss my old Mustang and the answer is no, not really. So now we are really setting off here in the Mustang and I'm noticing the steering on this actually feels heavier than the steering on the Shelby GT350 that I had. It's kind of interesting. Now turning here, turning radius is really good on the car. It turns excellently and that 10 speed automatic transmission so quickly it's perfect for this car actually now we're just going to take the mustang on the interstate and i'll actually turn it over into the shift mode so i can shift the gears myself here and i'll put it back into automatic mode i mean it's quick enough in my preference definitely a v8 since i owned a v8 mustang but it's quick enough for the car. This is definitely competitive for like the part of the segment that this is in and the price range that this is in. Ride quality and road noise on the interstate. So it actually rides pretty smooth over the interstate. It's um, pretty decent for a muscle car. And then road noise, there's not a whole lot that comes through into the cabin. The visibility, there's these little blind spot mirrors that are kind of like little convex mirrors. Those help out with visibility over the two sides. In the back, it's a little bit difficult because of the sloping roofline design, but it's still pretty easy to see over. In the hood, it's actually pretty easy to see over. It is a longer hood, so it does take a minute for you to get used to. Now, I do want to mention this before I wrap things up, and that is with sound. I am a little bit biased because I own, like I said, a Shelby GT350, and that's probably one of the best sounding cars you could ever purchase. This is okay on sounds but i almost would push you to get a v8 just from like an audio point of view if that works for you financially obviously if it doesn't stick with this if you want a mustang but if you can make the v8 work do it to wrap things up this is definitely super competitive for the segment i love the styling on the mustangs compared to the other cars that's just me personally it's just kind of like a preference that i have they kind of have this cool like muscle car sports car design and i really really dig that um but other than that if you are on the market for kind of like a sports car slash muscle car that handles really well that has good acceleration and it's actually pretty reasonably priced for what it is then definitely check out one of these mustangs start with the ecoboost and then kind of go up from there 
And there we have it, everyone, the 2019 Ford Mustang EcoBoost. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you are stopping for the first time, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe, comment down below what you thought. And then again, a big shout out and thank you to Larry H. Miller, Ford Lincoln here and Draper for providing us with the vehicle. If you're on the market for new Ford, check these guys out. I'll see all of you in that next video.